I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. Arizona Central caught up with Lewis Black, who said there are more people in the audience than before where you can say something and it'll pierce them. They'll be like, I can't believe you attacked my basic beliefs. It's a joke. I have to explain, we haven't been out together for a while, and if you don't know how a comedy show works, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out of my mouth, and it could be a long night for you. (laughs) There's a left-wing group that says, you're not supposed to say this, and there's a right-wing group saying things at times that are just way over the line, and they have things you're not supposed to say to them. That's going to pass, because 70% of the people out there still get what comedy is, and once again, we continue to respond to the minority, so stop it, all right? They're not in charge. The woke are not in charge. The other side is not in charge. So make your comments and then shut the bleep up. The Daily Telegraph spoke to Jim Jeffries, and Jim said it's very hard to cancel someone who's got 40, 50 stupid things he said that he could have just been canceled for. Every time I hear there's an inkling that I could be canceled, I'm like, which one was it? Like someone found an old interview of you saying something stupid, and I'm like, that sounds like me. But you can't live your life worrying like that. And let's face the facts here. You're only canceled for the people who want to cancel you. The people who still like you, still like you. And look, I'm at a stage of life where I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll sit back on a beach somewhere after being canceled. I'll be fine. But I haven't felt the time more in history than when I'm at a party and I have to watch what I say. And not just my political beliefs, but I might say something very mundane and then find myself talking to a QAnon supporter. This will be a person that you've liked for the last hour and you've been talking to him and then you're like, oh, F me. This person's bat uh, stuff crazy. I know with print interviews not to answer this. I've gone over the line many times and have a few I wish I could take back. Most of the bad jokes I've said never made it on a special, so I'm pretty happy with that. But you're about to ask me, what are the topics? And I'm not telling you. I'm not going to get caught for having apologized for something I don't want to apologize for. Trevor Noah will be touring South Africa in August and September of next year. Savannah presents Trevor Noah live in South Africa. Trevor says, I've been away from Mzanzi stages for too long and so much has happened. I'm excited to be back in front of a home crowd. Eugene Lenford is the marketing manager at Savannah Cider. And he says they're thrilled to bring Trevor Noah back. We believe comedy is a human right and that South African superpower is our ability to laugh in the face of challenges. Our purpose as a brand is to uplift and unite our nation through humor. We have a crisp, witty perspective on daily life, societal norms, culture, and traditions in South Africa. Can't wait to have Trevor back for what is certain to be an amazing series of performances and with Savannah's partners, culture and traditions in South Africa. From the Washington Post, Brian Baumgartner, not the guy that's going to dust me in the half marathon in about a week. That's a callback. Different guy. This Brian Baumgartner doesn't run half marathons in New Jersey. This one was Kevin on The Office. You know, that guy? Yeah, a little more famous than the half marathoner that's going to beat me by an hour. He's got a new book, Seriously Good Chili Cookbook. Brian writes, on April 30th, 2009, at roughly 9.02 p.m., my life changed forever. I became known as the Chili Guy. There was an episode of The Office in which Chili aficionado Kevin Malone captured hearts and spawned a multitude of memes In season five, when his character spills a giant pot of chili on the gray carpet at Dunder Mifflin, in the book, he, of course, shares Brian's seriously good chili recipe, which many have dubbed the office chili. There are also 176 other recipes from the International Chili Society's collection of cook-off winners, chefs, bloggers, and fans of the show. The book also includes fun facts like a hot pepper heat scale and a smattering of QR codes that take you to videos. Brian said they wanted 100 recipes. I thought, can we find 100? I don't know. Once it started coming in, it was incredible. The variety, vegetarian, vegan, poultry, beef, all the different kinds of flavors, chili verde, homestyle chili, Texas chili. You're probably wondering, what's the trick with the onions? Brian answered. He said, the onion bit is true. We're not looking for caramelization. I caramelize onions for a lot of different things, but not chili. Really changes the flavor. I'm attempting to get the onions translucent and then start adding stuff. Brian enjoyed developing a chili recipe, said I love the exploring of it. If you take the golf analogy, there's no such thing as a perfect round of golf. truly doesn't exist. I don't think my recipe is done. I don't think it's ever done. I will continue to change it and tweak. That's what I liked about going to the World Championship Chili Cook-Off. They all won a competition. They explained what they do. I picked up lots of tips along the way. Why do you want it to be good? You want it to be good because you want people to like it, enjoy it, get together and eat it. Chili, I view as very communal. It's about friends and family. All right, next week, October 13th to the 15th, Kansas City's Fountain City Comedy Festival. Comedian and founding member of Fountain City Comedy Festival, Stephen Taylor, said, We've had a pretty incredible independent comedy scene bubbling up for the past few years, and in other cities, they had a really good DIY scene, so we just kind of started creating our own. 
The name and logo serve to honor KC as the City of Fountains, said to have more fountains than Rome. The event's logo showcases a musing mermaid sitting on a fountain. <laughs> Taylor said, we just thought it was hilarious to have a mermaid in a landlocked state. The festival will pull in 15 plus shows over a single weekend. Kenny DeForest, Dina Hashem, River Butcher, and Niles Abstin, some of your performers. Now in November, the United Nations of Comedy Tour. This tour was founded to promote diversity through laughter and focuses on choosing the perfect blend of national comics by selecting an eclectic mix of styles. This year's lineup includes Jordan Rock, Sean Donnelly, Liz Mealy, and Funnyman Skiba. Let's meet the comics. Jordan Rock, the youngest brother of comedy icon Chris Rock. Hey, Jordan, what was it like when Will Smith punched your brother? But Jordan has built his career by placing brick by brick on his own. He's become one of the hottest comics in the New York comedy club scene, writes some sort of PR person, admired by comic greats such as Jerry Seinfeld, Dave Chappelle, and others. But hey, they printed it and I read it. Okay, Sean Donnelly. His rapid-fire comedy style will have you laughing nonstop while your stomach is in pain. Perhaps from the chili. No. Sean co-hosts the podcast My Dumb Friends with fellow comedian Dan St. Germain. He's a solid comic. He's been around for a while. Check out Sean Donnelly. Liz Mealy, one of New York's funniest comics with her sharp and piercing comedy. She's been around for a few years now. She's starting to break through as well. Her style of comedy is appreciated by mature audiences to millennials, which is one of the reasons Liz has experienced her level of success. And your host, Funnyman Skiba, a BET Comic View all-star. He has also co-hosted a hit radio show with National Broadcasting. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you get your shows, and I'll see you tomorrow.